Good morning, and welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church online. I'm so glad that you are gathering with us for worship today. Um, our service can begins on the first page in the booklet that was uh, sent an email this morning. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, 
and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, masters, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Through my words, O oh God, and in our hearts, call us. Amen. Here I am. <laughs> Is there anything more frustrating than spending a lot of time Time doing something unsuccessfully and then having somebody who has no idea what they're talking about come up and offer the most simple and obvious and basic suggestion. I think the only thing more frustrating than that is when they're right. I remember early in the pandemic when we were all still getting used to using Zoom um, and if you haven't uh, gotten used to using Zoom yet, God bless you. Um, but I was, on, I was on a call with just a few other people, and I couldn't hear anybody. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was like, is everyone else on mute? Did I change some weird setting in the innards of Zoom? And so I was trying to figure out what was going on, and then somebody sent me a little message in the, in the chat function and said, hey, are your speakers on? And I said, well, my speaker, of course my speaker, of course my speakers were off. That's why I couldn't hear anybody. And it was just the most obvious little, just push the button. I said, oh, right, I had you know, turned off the volume on my computer because I was doing something else and then forgot to turn it back on. And it was frustrating because I had spent a lot of time trying to figure out and diagnose this problem, and it was the most obvious thing in the world. And I imagine just, uh, that's just a little bit of what uh, Peter and his friends felt. They had been fishing all night long, and it wasn't that they'd pulled an all-nighter. It was just they were night fishermen, and so that's what they did. Um, but they had just spent their entire working night going out, rowing their boats out, dropping their nets so they thought they would be fish, waiting a little bit, pulling the nets back in, seeing that they were empty, going and rowing to someplace else, putting their nets down, waiting a little bit, pulling them back up and seeing that they were empty over and over and over again until the sun starts to come up, and they said, you know what? Forget it. Let's just take these things in and call it a night. And so they were on the shore there and, and cleaning out their nets from all the stuff that wasn't fish that they had caught. And, <clears throat> and then something strange happens. Because this man shows up and there's a crowd with him. And this usually relatively deserted beach is all of a sudden full of people who are crowding around this guy. And he steps into Peter's boat. Um, without asking, and says, hey, would you mind pushing me out just a little bit so I can have a, a, a little bit of distance between me and everyone so everyone can hear me? And 
and, and Simon at this point says, okay. And so he rows him out and pulls him out. And, and then Jesus starts to speak. And I imagine something happening to Simon at that point. Because Jesus starts to talk to this, this crowd, this, this group of, of misfits, of, of fishermen and, and peasants and farmers and, and prostitutes and tax collectors and all sorts of kind of ne'er-do-wells. And he starts telling them about the kingdom of God. And he's using all of this, this religious language, but somehow from Jesus' mouth, it sounds not like something that belongs in the halls of the temple, but something that matters to them right here and right now. He's talking to them about the same things, the same stories that they have known their whole lives long, but now somehow there is this new urgency to it, this new possibility to it, as though all of the, the, the stories of God in the temple and, and all of the sacrifices and the priests and all of that, that that God cares deeply and intimately about them, about this particular group of people. And Simon is listening and listening and realizing that he's heard about this guy before. He's heard about this, this Jesus. He comes from, from um, Nazareth in Galilee, and, and he's heard stories, stories about, about healings, about lepers being cleansed, about blind people receiving their sight, about demons being cast out, and he shifts a little uncomfortably in his seat next to this man. And then as this, the speech, the, the, the teaching ends and, and Jesus starts to send the people away, he turns to Peter, to Simon. And he says, why don't you, why don't you put your nets in the water? Try and catch some fish. And I imagine the frustration immediately starting to rise inside of Simon and saying, look, I've been doing that all night and I... Of, of course that's what I do. I'm a fisherman. I'm in a boat. Don't you understand? If I had caught any fish, I wouldn't have been still sitting here cleaning my nets. I'd be out selling them and, and, and moving on with my day. But you know what? If you say so, if you are the person who I think you are, then sure. Sure, I'll do it. I'll do it because you've, you've said so many things, and you may not know a thing about fishing, but you know so much about me and about the world that I'll listen to you. And so he goes and he, he puts his net in the water and tries to pull it out, and his hands are slipping on the rope, and he calls over to his friends to, to have them help him pull it in, and, and they start calling over to the other boat, and soon the, these nets that are almost strained to the breaking point are emptied out, part into one boat and part into the other, and there are so many fish that they're just flopping around by their feet, and they can barely move around, and the, the, the boats are sinking low in the water. They're going to take on water if they don't get into shore soon, and so they make their way into shore with this impossible, impossible load of fish. And Jesus steps out and probably kicks a few fish off of his feet. And something clicks for Simon. Something changes for him that will never be back to normal again. And he goes over to this man, Jesus, and he falls to his knees and he says, look, I don't know, I really don't know who you are, and I don't know who you think I am, but, but I'm not for you. Look, you, you, someone who talks the way you do, someone who can make all of this happen, I'm not, not being ungrateful, thank you, this is going to feed my family for, for months, and, and yes, the Romans are going to take their share of it, but, but this, this is a life-changing boon right here, and I'm so grateful for that, but You've got to go. I'm not, I'm not the one you need. I'm not the kind of person who would be with somebody like you. You, you belong out in, in, in temples and among scribes and learned people and, and telling people about how to change the world. I'm, I'm a fisherman. Just thank you, but, but please, go away. And Jesus looks at him. And what's amazing is he doesn't offer him forgiveness. 
He doesn't tell him your sins are forgiven. I make you worthy. And he certainly doesn't take a, a live coal with a pair of tongs and put it on his mouth. All he says is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come and follow me, and I will make you fish for people. You are going you are gonna to be capturing people the way your nets have been teeming with fish this morning. You are going to have so many people who follow you and who follow me. And Simon, again, sees something change and sees his whole life fall apart and rearrange and crystallize around this person, Jesus. It's as though everything that he knew and everything that he has been has been swept away, and now he's the same, but with a new sense of purpose. And so he walks away. He walks away from his boats. He walks away from this life-changing catch of fish. He walks away from the nets, and he just follows Jesus. It's astounding when you think about it, to walk away from all of that, to walk away from, from your whole life. It's a radical act, because you've got to remember there are tax collectors in that crowd that were listening to Jesus, and they were seeing that catch of fish, and they were totting up just how much they would fetch at market, and how much the, the Roman government's share was, and how much they could skim off the top of that, and now these fish are just going to be left here. And, and the, other, the other fishermen who were partners with Simon are now wondering how they are supposed to make these boats all work, how they're supposed to get them all out into the water, who's going to help them clean the nets, who's going to help them clean this catch, who's going to help them do whatever it is they, the fishermen do, frankly, I don't know. But who's going to help them run this with Peter and Simon and James and John? Gone. It's disrupted everything because of this person, Jesus. And that's what we refer to as a call. And we have the idea in our mind that, that a call from God, right, is, is a moment when the clouds break and, and the, the light streams down in, like sometimes you can see it just shining in from right up there. I know it's, it happens. It was happening this morning. And the light descends on you, and you hear a voice from heaven saying, go and do this. This is your calling. This is your purpose. And you stand up and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. But that hasn't happened to many of us. And so maybe that's not quite what call is. And sometimes we think that call is just something that happens to people who, uh, who end up putting on clothes like this, to, to priests and deacons and bishops and, and monks and nuns, that they have this, this inner sense of calling that, uh, that, that propels them forward, this sense of clarity of purpose. And sometimes it's like that, and that's a kind of a call. Or maybe we think that calling is just a, a fancy church word we use to, to get people to serve on committees. That, you know, as a CPA, I really think God might be laying it on your heart to serve on the finance committee. Um, and, and sure, yes, we use that kind of language because God calls us with the gifts that we have. But call is something even deeper and different and other than that. Because call, first and foremost, is something that it happens to all of us. It's not restricted to, to particular religious people, to people with a particular calling that the church recognizes. Call happens in the day-to-day -day moments of our life, just as Jesus always told us that, that God is present, perhaps even more so, in the ordinary in the day-to-day, -day, in, in the average people, then, then God is present in the, the great cathedrals and temples of the world. Yes, those are places where we go to be aware of God, to, to remember and be renewed by God. But the place where we find our call is out there. Simon found his call in a fishing boat because he was a fisherman. 
And he went out and used that same idea, that same part of his identity to go out and, and follow Jesus. To, to tell people about the kingdom of God. Your calling happens right where you are. Maybe, maybe in, a, in a classroom, as, as a teacher or as a student, you learn something about who you are, and you learn that maybe in standing at the front of the classroom or sitting in the back, that you've got a particular view of how much God loves these people around you. And you've got a particular set of skills and tools that you can use to show them that love. Because if you teach somebody even how, how, how to read, how to, how to parse a sentence, how to, how to diagram a sentence, how to do algebra or calculus or whatever, you are telling them that they are worthwhile, they are worth teaching. If you, if you work in a, in a hospital or in, in an administrative position and you feel like all you do is answer emails and shuffle papers around, you have the opportunity to be a part of something larger, to be a voice in a bigger system, to notice the people behind the emails and the papers that are shuffled around, to notice that, that all that we're doing ultimately is about serving other people. And if it's not, if what we're doing is not ultimately about lifting others up, then you have the opportunity to change that, to be a voice for the people who need a voice, to, to lift up and elevate the voices of others and, and give them a, a sense of, of what's going on in this vast machinery that undergirds so much of our lives. If you work and serve others in a healing capacity, you have the opportunity to share the kingdom of God because in the kingdom of God we are made whole and healing is a part of who God is. And maybe, maybe your work, your, your, your job doesn't feel at all like a calling, but maybe there's something else. Maybe you walk in to the same coffee shop every weekday morning and you smile at the other people in line and you make a joke with the person ringing you up and you uh, maybe buy the odd cup of coffee for the person behind you in line and maybe that is just enough to let someone else know that this world is not as grim as it sometimes seems to be. We all are called and that calling will sooner or later disrupt our lives if we listen to it. But the truth is, it's never that far away. You don't have to wait for the, the beam of light to come and smack you in the face. Sometimes you've just got to get up and gather your nets and go fishing. And sometimes in the midst of that most ordinary of activities, whatever your fishing boat looks like, God shows up, and the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the love of God can shine through you. Amen. I invite us to stand as we are able and to join with the voices of the church in every time and place as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to our God, who was made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. We pray for all the holy people of God and for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Thomas, our own bishop, and for Andrew, Chris, and Gail, our clergy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness to be baptized into a new way of life, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders through these challenging days to the ways of justice and righteousness. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Janet, our governor. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As the Magi traveled from afar to bring gifts and celebrate the Savior's birth, we pray that our community be inspired to offer our gifts we have to the world in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus climbed the mountaintop and proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, we pray for the sick, health, livelihoods, and lives to the pandemic. We pray also for those in our parish, especially Jim Andrews, Sue Andrews, Mary Archidiacono, Jackie Belmonte, Jamie Carpenter, Patty Gagne, Roland Gagne, Louise McCormick, Suzanne Robinson, Maureen Summers, Michelle Mondor, Delta Fuller, Elaine McClellan, Barbara Hill, Dorothy Matheson, Ann Becker, Davis Robinson, Tom Cryer and Sue Cryer, Sue Curia, Carolyn Kershaw, Norm Anderson, Bob Gunter, Nancy Tuttle, Sheila Kaiser, and Donna Bacon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for those we love but see no longer, especially David Stotts and Grace White Walker, in whose memory of the vigil candle is lit. Give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, who spoke light into being, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your love, and that all nations be drawn to you and be overwhelmed 
with joy. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace to all those of you watching at home. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. peace. Well, once again, welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church online. It is, as always, a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you in this way. Um, I want to invite you to join us for coffee hour following the service at 1030 on Zoom. Uh, The link was in uh, the email sent out this morning, so I hope you will be able to join us for that time of fellowship. You've got to bring your own coffee, though. Um, I know uh, we are all excited for our return to the sanctuary um, in person, and that will be in two weeks on uh, February 20th. Uh, The sanctuary will look different. Um, I want you to know that, and you'll be able to see that uh, next Sunday on our live stream uh, service. But we're going to kind of reorient things. The altar is going to be over uh, by where the, uh, kind of in front of where the choir sits, and so we're going to be able to extend the sanctuary out into the great hall um, so that we can allow for more uh, physical distancing between chairs. Um, And hopefully we'll also be able to have Um, that that will give us that kind of flexibility that will enable us to remain in person whenever the next surge or wave comes as well. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I know it's going to feel different, um, and this is something that we're doing in order to allow us uh, to continue in our worship. We are still doing uh, what we do well. We're just making the the adjustments that we need to uh, adapt to the, the times we find ourselves in. There are a number of um, announcements that are in the, the, our weekly news leak, um, so you've been getting that this week, but I did want to highlight just a couple. Um, first of all, in uh, February, we are looking for uh, soup, uh, soup pots and stock pots. If you've got any lying around that you're no longer using, or if you happen to be by, um, you know, a, a, a soup pot emporium <laughs> and, and find a good deal, um, bring those by to, to St. David's. Those are going to go to our, uh, our neighbors at St. Elizabeth's. Um, as you know, a lot of uh, the guests from St. Elizabeth's are coming from um, all over the world and don't really have uh, much to do and so m- much to, to use to, to cook with. And so um, any uh, kind of crock pot or soup pot that you can uh, offer would be a great gift. So um, you can also have them, if you want to order it online and have them shipped to us, that's uh, a wonderful opportunity as well. Um, Also, I wanted to just read a a letter of thanks from uh, Caring Unlimited, uh, your county's domestic violence shelter. Uh, It's our annual tradition to uh, sponsor their holiday uh, Christmas party. And obviously this year the party wasn't able to take place in person due to the pandemic, but we did collect all sorts of things. And um, an excerpt from their letter reads, this season your gifts to our holiday program gave joy to 46 families with a total of 98 children. Each family and each family member received personalized gifts from their wish lists, along with other items, including household essentials, clothing and winter gear, gift certificates for family outings and activities, and gift cards to shop together at favorite stores. So thank you, as always, uh, for your incredible generosity in supporting those in need in our community. I'm really grateful for that. Um, You saw in the email this morning that um, we have a a, a particular opportunity in this season to 
um, support our Wabanaki siblings uh, here in the state of Maine. Um, I wanted to introduce uh, Roy Smoot, who's going to be speaking about that uh, a little bit. Uh, Roy is a member of St. David's, as well as serving on the Diocesan uh, Racial Justice Council and the uh, Committee on Indian Relations, as well as part of uh, the Wabanaki Alliance, I believe. So um, he's involved in all this, and he's going to share a little bit about ways that we can support our neighbors. Thank you, Father Andrew, and good morning, everyone. Yes, June and I have the honor of serving on the Racial Justice Council. Uh, she's over here hiding behind the camera. Regarding the opportunity that Father Andrew addressed about our Wabanaki brethren, the Episcopal Church of America asked us, will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Our own Diocese of Maine, the Council on Indian Relations, tells us we are called by our Creator to deepen our relationship with the Wabanaki people of Maine, to stand with the tribes in the pursuit of justice, to affirm their inherent sovereignty, and to support the preservation of their native languages and cultures. Jesus tells us, do unto others as you would have them do to you. There are over 570 other tribes across America who receive federal funds and resources to help their children receive a better education, positively impact poverty, and purchase land that's been set aside for them with government-approved funds. Maine tribes have been denied these, these items to do and have since 1980. The Settlement Act of 1980 in, in Maine made that happen. They've also been denied funds from over 150 federal bills that have been passed since 1980. Their right to determine what happens on their land has also been denied by the same act. Maine is the only state out of all 50 that denies its native people these things. LD 1626 in the state legislature will restore sovereignty and give them access to federal funds and resources. Bishop Brown of our diocese has made passage of this bill a key mission for our diocese. Our diocese passed a resolution at the conference in 2021 supporting the same bill. In your email this morning, there was a link to a paper about FAQs, facts about 1626. Please review that. And if you have the opportunity and want the opportunity, please submit a supportive testimony letter to the Maine State Legislative Judiciary Committee their public hearing, which is on February 15th, only nine days from now. There's also a link in today's email that takes you to a page with, page with great tips and instructions about how to submit your testimony letter. We also included a sample letter, which you'll need to edit and change with your name, address, and things like that, or other changes as you see fit. And finally, as it notes this morning, Please feel free to email us with any questions you have. Jesus tells us to love our neighbors. Even though the Wawanaki people live hours away from our area here in the Kennebunk Wells area, they are our neighbors and fellow Mainers. Your serious consideration and support for reviewing this and supporting them is deeply appreciated. Thanks for your time. And thank you to Roy and June for your uh, ministry and your answering of God's call in this way. Um, I'm excited about this, uh, this new moment for us and uh, know that in a couple of weeks, on, actually on February 20th, there will be a, an opportunity to hear more about this and our efforts uh, within the diocese, and that will be on Zoom, and you'll get more information about that in this week's News League. And now, friends, let us walk in love 
as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Our service continues with the Eucharistic prayer found in your bulletin. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, <clears throat> Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves, a living sacrifice. 
Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with blessed David, our patron, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Now, friends, remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who created you, the Son who redeems you, and the Holy Spirit who makes you holy, be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. God is in the everyday waters of our life, in the ordinary. Jesus calls us to fish those waters, to cast our nets. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.